Hey guys, good morning. Hey, I want to share with you something that um, I got early in the morning at 5 a.m. March 17th. And I just kind of didn't forget about it, but just kind of got sidetracked because I didn't understand the last one. But it's three scriptures. Jeremiah 17, 1 through 8. Isaiah 17, 1 through 8. And Psalms 117. So, I'm going to read what the Lord told me, and then you can read those scriptures. But the 117 in Psalms is the one that I really want to kind of end, you want to really highlight. Um, they're all good, though. A warning has been foretold of the truth and the way. I am the truth and the way. No man will see the Father but through me. Thy word is a lamp under your feet. So you will not step on anything deadly, and the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. A light under your path, so you can see where to go. My will for you. This day will pass just as suddenly as it started. Okay, guys, I'm, you know, I'm gonna get off. Of, I don't even like this. Don't even want to do this. I'm gonna get off this Corona, COVD or whatever it is, 19 rat trap because it's a bunch of, honestly guys, it is. It's a bunch of lies and nonsense, fear, ang anxiety. People have just gone crazy over it. But there's a constant in this, that his word wouldn't go void. God is yet at the throne, okay? This God does go along with Isaiah 27, 1. God is going to cut the head off this Leviathan, this twisted up serpent, this lies that have been portrayed as the truth. I was at, I'm going to not get stay on this too long, but because I want to get into the really the meat and potatoes of this. But I was at the laundromat, blasted all over the news. Blah, 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 blah. Same nonsense narrative nothing to do with god jesus the holy ghost or his word all to do with panic and fear just where the enemy wants us to be then i went to the store sign up please be courteous to the cashiers and consider using your debit card or your credit card instead of cash now they're asking nicely of course one day it may be a demand, and one day it may be mandatory. So I get all that, okay? Great, awesome. Not good news. But the good news of the gospel of Jesus, of who he really is. Guys, I can say this with authority because I'm going to practice what I preach. And that's trusting in him. That's what he wants us to do is trust in him. I mean, not in our own understanding, guys, okay? Our understanding, guys, is nonsense, really, too, you know? Because that's why I said that about the 5 a.m. prayer. We're going to get our answers from him, the body. It may, it's not even going to look different because it's going to be all the same. God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and his word, if we're really praying. But he wants us to listen, guys. Really listen. That's the bigger part of this prayer because he's going to direct his people. Let me get back to this before I get off into something else. Um, because I want to end with this because he said, and I didn't understand this at first. I did, but I didn't. This day will pass just as suddenly as it started. Six months ago, you never even heard it, or however long ago, you never even heard of this coronavirus garbage. Yes, I'm not mocking or discounting any of the deaths or the, or the anguish or the torment, but it's a disease, guys. It's the flu. We, not not anymore, but a couple, last week we were, you know, murdering more babies, letting more babies be murdered in abortion. More people die in traffic accidents. Um, and, you know, the list could go on and on, you know. One of the things that they say is, is uh, what do they call it? Um, 
necessity or whatever. The, pardon me if I'm, you know, a little off on this. Liquor stores. It's like, guys, look at alcoholism. Look at how many people die from drunk drivers. Look at all the mothers against drunk drivers. It's time to turn to Jesus, guys, to his word. And I'm, that's, that's what this one is, Psalms 117. And I, like I said, I didn't understand it. This day will pass. Yes, there's a warning out there. Yes, it's time to turn. Yes, it's time to repent. We all need to repent, guys. Me too. I've got some issues too. I got a couple people right now that's like, man, God, I'm still on the wheel with this. I'm not right in this. I've got some spots in my heart. I'm going to spare you the details, but this is what I want to tell you about Psalm 117. You can read it too. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people, for his mercies, for his merciful kindness is great towards us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise the Lord. The truth of the Lord, guys. Not all this surreal garbage because he didn't want his people to be eating a bunch of garbage because it's not good for you which we're, we're putting in our minds polluting the truth of the gospel that twisted up that what he told me six months ago or a year ago about this world and how the church and the world and Isaiah 27 1 it's all twisted up into something it was never intended to be because the enemy's out there to portray this garbage Jesus is the cross he wants us to come to the cross. And there was a message out by another preacher, not just to the cross, but through the cross. Our trust and hope needs to be in him. Guys, this is just a little testimony, but our income got cut by th three quarters in January. No job. For all this stuff. What is it now? April? A week ago. My lights are on. I can go get a drink of water. My computer still works. Car still drives. I got gas in my car. What I'm saying is the provision of the Lord because I'm trusting Him. He told me a couple things to do. And some of them were very time consuming and I'm about to end and get back on on what I'm supposed to do on the, on the internet, on the YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram and stuff. So I apologize, I haven't been, but I had to be obedient. But I, I followed what he told me to do, a couple things. I'll spare you the details. But about a week ago, my wife woke up, and she's a very clean person. She just loves, she just is. She loves order and cleanliness, and, except her closet. You open it up, and it's like shoes blow up, and stuff falls out. But other than that, very neat, orderly, organized, very efficient person. Well, she wakes up and there's water all over the floor because the freezer door popped open and started defrosting stuff. Why did it do that? Because we were busting at the scene with food. We couldn't contain it all. I don't even have a job. God's my provider. I'm not, nobody gave me a hundred thousand dollar check to pay all my bills. I don't get a dime from you guys. No support. The Lord tells you to send me a million dollars, send it, write the check, but or ten bucks. I, that's not my point. I'm not asking for money, guys. He's my source and my provision. And I just did the things out of obedience. What He told me to do. And it was like, okay, God, what's the next step? Okay, God, what's the next step? Okay, God, my prayer's been with Him. Praying all day long. So I am going to cut this short because there's several visions and dreams that I've had, and I'm going to just add them to it. But I'm going to end with this one, guys, because it goes with this message. And this in this vision, I saw the bride, God's people, the church, whatever you want to call it. But it was the true, true, it was the true bride, his people. And there was a snake weaseling through, and he would stop it, 
select people and bite them on the head. And I was like, man, a little bit of apprehension hit me. And I was like, man, God, he's going to kill him. The enemy's going to destroy him. Swallow their whole head, but not their body. But they backed off. And there was a hood. And I saw the body and it was, they were eagles. And that hood covered their eyes and their beak, they couldn't speak, but their ears were opened, but they couldn't see or speak. They couldn't, but they could hear and the enemy was just blah, 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 blah. And they couldn't tell the truth because they couldn't see because he had blind, blinded them. But he wanted to feed their mind with garbage and that's where we're at today, guys. Trash, garbage. Why are you, uh, I had this early one morning in prayer, the Lord spoke to me, he said, Steve, why are you eating so much garbage? It was six months ago. There's a lot more to this than that, but you know, this is, you know, of course is a demonic attack, but it's time for that early morning prayer. What is God telling you to do as his body? So, I am going to put this one more in. There's just so much I've got to share with you, but <clears throat> same thing, early morning prayer <clears throat> or some morning prayer, <clears throat> sitting in my chair, praying. Lord said, what do you do when you go to the store? You get up, you walk to the door, you walk to your car, turn on the ignition, get to the end of the street, turn left, then you turn right and you know, you got a little bit of a plan and you know where you're going. Well, that's the body, guys. My, my feet had to walk to my car, but they can't turn on the ignition. My hands had to turn on the ignition, but they can't walk me to my car, get me to my car. My brain had to tell me where to go at the end of the street, but none of those other things could do that. So we can't discount what the body's doing, guys, if it's a true body, but that's where the spirit of discernment comes in. That's where our, why the enemy's trying to blind us and feed us all this garbage. So we get fearful and apprehensive and just do crazy stuff ourselves that make no sense. I do need to add this because this is a very important about the understanding and leaning not on our own understanding and trusting in the Lord. Guys, our understanding has got us in trouble, drifted away from, from, from the truth, from I'm Jesus Christ, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Drifting away from the Word of God, drifting away from our early morning prayer, and yours may not be early morning, you may not be able to, but 5 a.m., it's a great time, but yours might be 12. Pray, pray, pray. But this, this was just a couple days ago and the Lord was dealing with me about our understanding. Guys, we think we're smart and brilliant. It's an idol that one of the, I saw a preacher about the idol of science, but that's an idol, guys. We think we're smart because we got the cell phone and invented the computer and all this other garbage. Man, guys, we're still trying to figure out who shot JFK 50 years ago. Everything from some it makes a little sense to the CIA did it to all these crackpot conspiracy theories. That's our understanding. People still debate about it and argue about it. And where'd it get us? Time to turn it over to him and his understanding and his knowledge and his truth. And you're not going to get it by all this theology, it's going to be through neology, getting a hold of, of him. Who's your source? God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and his word. It's going to be birthed in prayer, guys. This battle is going to be won in the direction he gives us. Not our own understanding. Not us trying to figure it out. Not us trying to build another hospital or whatever. I'm not saying we shouldn't be wise and take precautions and all that. That's not what I'm saying either. So I'm not going to swing the pendulum in the opposite direction too much. But what's he telling us to do? Hit the streets and preach? 
there's a really good friend that I've got on Facebook now. That's what he's doing, man. He's, and if I don't think he's can, you know, he seems some people might think he's even a little bit abrasive. He's part of the body, guys. Preaching the gospel. The Lord told him to hit the streets, and he did. He's just being obedient. So that's what I'm saying, guys. It's just time to be obedient. Quit listening to the devil and the enemy and this false narrative. Not even fake news. It's the enemy, guys. I'm going to end with this. It's like that whack-a-mole game, guys. Today it's the coronavirus. It took three years for relentless. It was the impeachment, which was demonic attack, too, of twisted upness. Where is that now? You don't hear about that now? It was North Korea. It was Iran. Did you ever play that whack-a-mole game, guys? Seems to be one popping up all over the place. It's, it's distraction. It's lies. It's twisted up stuff. Isaiah 27, 1. Why would he give that to me in prayer? But what does it say? God is going to lift up a sword and cut the head off. Well, what's the sword, guys? The word of God. The truth. This day's going to end, guys. And I don't know that it's going to be rosy and, you know, those kind of... I'm not going to go that, down that rabbit hole either. But it's going to be good. And a great day. And awesome in the Lord. For those that are listening and those that are in Him and those that are abiding on the vine... I don't think it's going to be such a great day for those that aren't. And that's why the warning's coming out. That's why it's time to turn. And it's not a scared straight message because God doesn't want a bunch of scaredy cats. He wants his people back. He wants his bride back. He wants that connectivity back with us. He wants to show us his love. And who he really is. Not this fear. I do need to end. I put this out there on Instagram and on Facebook too. People ask, are you really taking the coronavirus seriously? We really need to ask, are you really taking Jesus seriously? Because what you succumb to in death, in the natural, in this life, pales in comparison to where you're going to spend eternity. Where's your soul? Where's... Where's your life going to come from? Who's your source? Decision time, guys. And when we decide to turn it over to Him, really turn it over to Him, we'll see you at 5 in the morning. I may not see you. You, may, you know, I'm not going to have a house full of people. I don't have a big enough house for one, but it just... God sees us. Jesus sees us, the Holy Ghost sees us, and His Word sees us. Like I said earlier, if your hand be His hand, if your foot be His foot, if your His heart be His heart, if you're a prophet, prophesy, if you're a prayer warrior, pray. See, God, we have to edify and lift up the body together, guys, and connect it, and fitly frame together, but with one head, and the name is be Jesus. When we get there, that's when things will change. This is just a prelude to stuff that's coming. This coronavirus, yes, it is, you know, not knocking the seemingly magnitude of it. But look at my other one about a storm coming, guys. There's plenty of stuff coming up our way to pray about. And that's why at 5 in the morning it's time to humble ourselves, repent, weep between the porch and the altar, guys. Me too, I'm going to practice when I preach. I said about the faith piece. And I'm living by faith. You know, none of y'all are paying my paycheck or have given me any money or card or I mean nothing guys. I'm no skin in the game on that one from y'all. And I would appreciate it if you do, but and however God works it, I you know, I'm just I'm just gonna be obedient, guys. And I'm not going to get off the wheel, like I told my wife, because it's like he's teaching me so much. I got a hundred different testimonies and then that happened in the last month, a couple months, of stuff that the Lord has done. 
Some and mostly and a lot of it miraculously, but it's like, but he's like, okay, God, man, that's good. I'll take that. This is how I start my day, guys. I love coffee, guys. Maybe too much, probably. Trust in the Lord. I'll end with this, guys. All this, there's been so much surrealness about, even about the church and presence and da-da-da and all these buildings and where you go and who you sit under and all this other garbage, really, honestly whole other message but when I get up in the morning time and I make my coffee it smells really good pour it in my cup looks really good it could be sitting right next to me six inches away until I pour it down my throat get it in me it's nothing in a few minutes it's lukewarm and it's no good it tastes horrible Got to be hot. Got to get in you. We have to be his word, guys. His living, breathing word. That's the vessel he created you to be. And we need to encourage the body and quit trying to discourage the body and tear it down and beat it up over stu stupidity like the world wants us to do in the world and it's driven by the enemy, by the devil. Sorry, there's all this trash out there. It's time to cut Cut its head off with the word. Lies, all this fake. We, fake news was the big thing of the of the day. Well, there's been a lot of fake gospel out there, guys. A lot of, you know, a little bit of Jesus was kind of an afterthought. Aforementioned or just whatever. I, you know, I'm not trying to do anything but be obedient, guys, to his word maybe still a little raw okay that's just me that's the best league create me to be maybe a little more polished you maybe you know like i said one of these guys um that's out there in the streets man he, i don't think you're gonna be able to pull one over on him there's several of them that i got on facebook now and some really good friends that i've had for years that are really profound and some of them are sweet some of them are seemingly abrasive and i'm reposting a lot of different stuff because I'm just being obedient to what the Lord's telling me to do, guys. That's all. So that's all I'm telling you. Be obedient. 5 a.m. prayer. Let's get a hold to God. Let's change this world. This is the world changing us. Love you guys. I'll talk to you soon.